Yeah. It's kind of like, mm, why are you awake? I don't know. Last night, apparently, she was scared of the train noises. Well, yeah, I mean, it's like a few miles away, like 10 miles away. You can hear it? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, they're loud. I was at an airport, but after a while, it just wasn't weird anymore. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really bother me, but I think really the long story short is she just didn't want to be in bed that particular month, so that she chose that was the reason why. But she's come out and told me she's afraid. I'm like, what are you afraid of? Uh, heh, heh, heh. Go back to bed. Uh, any old who, um, before we get started with the new stuff, um, question. Do you guys have any questions about the budget? Um, or do you guys do? Um, no. No. Good. Fabulous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And from previous podcasts, do you know which country gets hurt the most with the U.S. dollar transaction? Uh, considering this is the first time I've ever done this project, oh. no idea. Whoa. Where are we from? Wait, no. you said you do it oh, I'm, I'm doing it with, I, when I said that, I did it with uh, first and period. So I was saying, like, you know, when I did it earlier, uh, I was like, the first period when I did it, this thing. Okay. I feel like there's you. Bye. 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 So to answer your question, um, my assumption would be it's going to be the capitals of places, and it's almost always going to be like the traditional England, Spain, Italy, Japan, China, those kind of things. Now that's fine. You know, there's plenty of countries out there for both. And honestly, those are probably going to make your life a lot easier than saying like, you know, I'm, I'm going to do Zambia because that might be tricky. Um, now. It's up to you, that being said, you know, so if you want to do a little bit of free research and see like, you know, what's out there, I'm sure you can find it. In fact, Standard Living, the website I showed you as well, I think it works. Yes. Yeah, of course. You can't do the U.S. What about U.S. territories? U.S. fine. U.S. no. Oh, no, none, of, none of the territories either. No, no, no. Yeah, for the U.S. Yeah, you cannot be the U.S. The, uh, the United States of America is off limits. Mexico, sure. Puerto Rico, no. Puerto Rico, no. Yeah. 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 Puerto Rico, no. Yeah. No. I mean, there's parts of it that are, but you can also do the Bahamas, which is not. Didn't expect all the tropical places, although I'm not surprised now that I think about it. Jamaica would be fine. Jamaica would be crazy. Can you choose like if someone does Australia, but can you do like a different city in Australia? No. no. Okay. Country is locked. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. Well, we'll pick Friday, so make certain you guys have an idea because you got to Ireland. Because I'm from Ireland, you know. <laughs> That's such an American thing. Uh, well, that's fun. Because, yeah, you guys got options. Okay, so where we last left off, we were talking about going to the sewer. That was exciting. That was fun. And, uh. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. And then I sound like really um, my brain and then Okay, so they have a game. Didn't they, didn't they do that in like a war or something? Nah, it was, it was more complicated than that. Basically, long story short, it's lies. Lies, lies, lies. Anyways, um, so <clears throat> let's talk about some other cultural elements. Because, again, we, we talked a little bit about history, got away from this. A few other things, but there's another stuff as well. So first up, could you just continue? Mm -hmm. Let's get right. All right. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Right. Because I don't want to like. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, this is why we continue to go to the north. We're gonna be standing on. No. 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 This is region. Specifically, we're looking at central so, like, Western Europe. So like, I have my titles in this separate slide. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is the first thing. The region. You got it. Good, yes? Wait, we're on Western Europe. Yes. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah. Which region is Western Europe? Well, it's a free thing, but yeah, it's Western Europe's fine. I don't title it because it doesn't matter. It all comes together. Yes, it does. I'm not titling it then. All right, so back to it. Back to it. Uh, generally speaking, when we look at standard of living, okay, this is one of the tools we can look at in determining how their economy does, what sort of situation they find themselves in. For the most part, in Europe, standard of living is pretty high. Um, there has been some pretty big problems with the economy in the past 10 years because I think sometimes we don't quite realize how interconnected we all are. You know, we buy stuff from all around the world and they buy our stuff. Uh, Europe, countries in Africa, countries in the Middle East, all over the place. And, you know, this is part of this global economy. Now, traditionally, this area was agricultural, as most places are, but it was one of the first in the world to industrialize. The Industrial Revolution officially began in New York. From that point on, these different tech uh, companies, if you will, uh, although it makes it sound weird, but I'm going to say these industrialized companies emerged and developed, and eventually they went past an industrial economy into a post industrial economy. That's kind of where we are right now. Most people make their living in the United States doing service jobs. Do you guys know the difference between a good and a service? Mm -hmm. economics? A good is something physical. So you go to Walmart and you buy a candy bar, that's a good. It's something you have physically made with you. A service is something you could do for yourself, but maybe you don't want to because you, you don't feel confident in your abilities, or maybe you just don't have the time, or you want to have someone who's an expert at that craft. So for instance, you could change your own oil. It's not that hard. You can go get the stuff and do it yourself. But some people are like, "Yes, it's easier to pay for it." So you pay it, pay it for you. A la, you have a service. Another example of the service would be being a lawyer. You can defend yourself in court. It's just not a very good idea. Same thing with being a surgeon. You can do your own surgeries if you really want to. <laughs> Feel advised. Okay, so moving on, as time has progressed, there's a number of other different industries in throughout Europe. Uh, everything from producing dairy products all the way up to high-tech fields, computer software, things like that. As far as electricity is concerned, it relies pretty heavily on nuclear power, but also it provides its energy through water and other renewable resources. It's a pretty busy tourist trade, and why do people go to Europe for tourism? History, yes. That's it's history, right? People don't go to Europe for the most part for the nice climate. I mean, Mediterranean absolutely. You know, there's some pretty awesome beaches down there. But as far as like Netherlands, people don't go there like I'm gonna go to like lay out in the sun. People don't go there, like for one day in like July. Yeah, no thanks. I think it was Mr. Armstrong was telling me that in Scotland, summer lasts for a week. Otherwise, it's just rain. So it's like you know that it's not the weather that draws people to places. It's, it's the history. I mean, seriously, think about it. People go and stare at the Queen of England's house. That's a little creepy and stalkerish when you get right down to it. Especially like, there's the Queen! Take photographs, take photographs, you know? It's just a little bit weird. That's because, if you think about it, the Queen of England is really not even a political entity anymore. She's really just more like... No, she doesn't. Um, 
she, she basically is a living, breathing bit of yeah, history. I think it's a lot of history. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of fascinating in that regard. I would like to say all of your books have like dust in them, like pickles. And that's recorded, by the way. That's not like a prayer. Congratulations. You've been immortalized. Thank you. So anyways, as far as the products are concerned for this area, most of the products people tend to think about are what we consider luxury items. Uh, for instance, let's talk expensive cars for a second. What's the most expensive car you can think of? A Mustang. Interesting. A Mustang. A Mustang. They're like the little... Honestly, it's funny because I've had so many high school students with Mustangs. They're actually kind of cheap. Wait, no, I thought about Mercedes. No, it's... Maybe. Shoot. Oh, maybe, it's maybe it's the one that's like when they have a turn signal, it's like in a pattern. It's like the newer model. I don't know. I was, I'm drawing a blank there. Maybe. There might be an expensive Mustang that I'm not it's aware of. Like, I don't know. It's, it's like a type of car that it's like when it has a turn signal. Right, let's talk sports cars for a second. Lamborghini? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Ferrari? Yeah. Aston Martin? Uh, Porsche. Yeah. Mm. Uh, what about Bentley? What about a Range Rover? Yeah, it's not like Range Rover. I would not call it an expensive car, but yes, they're produced in England. So are Volkswagen Beetles. I mean, those cars are all cars. You know? Uh, I suppose that's true. I suppose it's a matter of perspective. But let's talk value. Okay? Let's talk, for instance, a. Um, uh, something like a Bentley or a, um, okay. um, let's talk about Ferrari, okay, most expensive Ferrari on the market is $600,000, that's how much I think, okay, that's a lot of money, frankly, no doubt about it. that's like more than some people's houses, one of my houses, three of my houses, it's more than that. So, big expensive car, yeah? So like a Bentley, there is no price set. If you have to ask, you can't afford it. They're expensive. That's because like they don't have like leather seats. It's real leather that's been hand stitched in place and every stitch is perfect. The dashboard is Hand carved wood. They come. They come with a wet bar. A wet. A wet bar. It's a wet with a sink. What? What's a wet bar? A bar. A bar is a place where you where you drink alcohol. I'm assuming you know what a bar. Is. A bar is a place where you get alcohol. Yay! I'm glad you don't know this. Well done. A wet bar just has a sink. Anyway. So you're like, why do you need that? Because people who afford those kind of cars don't drive them. They're not made for the comfort of the driver because that's someone who pays someone to do that. That's it's incredible. made for the comfort of the passenger. Yes, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> like, relevant economic comment is good. <laughs> like it. Yes, ma'am. How do you make a, oh, oh my gosh, I forgot this. How do you make a profit if it's so expensive that no one can buy it? You don't make very many, and you only cater to the super rich. Oh, oh, there, there are, are, no, 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 these are crafts. These are people who this is like their living, right? Okay. Um, this is this is my point. Is we're talking about luxuries. We're talking about things that not many people afford. For instance, uh, the fastest land production car, at least I'm aware of. I'm not sure there's a different ones that yell at me. There's many who yell at me. The, uh, the Bugatti Veyron, which is a V16 engine. It's, it's two engines crammed together, the biggest engine in production, two of them. It's the fastest land vehicle. I believe it's 260 miles per hour. There's no way you would ever use that in real life. It's just a giant toy. Memory says it's like 800,000, maybe a million point two, something like that. I forget how much money it is. And that's, again, understandably a lot of money. But if you're talking about a billionaire with a B, these are individuals that, to them, $500,000 is the equivalent of, like, 
Yeah, pretty much. I was just like 25 cents. Oh. Some of that. You know, it's just that that perspective is different from what folks are used to. And so they're known for these type of quality products. Uh, for instance, if I say Switzerland, Swiss, what do you think of? Cheese. I'm assuming cheese, cheese or chocolate. So that's uh, how do you guys think of watches or clockwork? The renowned the clocks and watches. No, hmm? So sorry, yeah? Mm. Yeah, there's some pretty crazy watches. Jay-Z had one uh, that was like, I forget how much it was, but it was a stupid amount of money. <laughs> it, 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 I, it, I remember reading about this watch, I was like, holy crap. Anyways, in Europe, most people live in the city. Uh, there are rural communities, obviously, but there's higher population in those cities, which isn't really terribly surprising. Uh, most people use public transportation to get around because it's cheaper. Most of you guys will discover this as you start doing your research, as we did with Edinburgh yesterday. Uh, it becomes a lot easier to get around whenever you live right next to everything. So it becomes less necessary to have personal transport. Not to say that folks in Europe don't like having personal transport, but they do. England's pretty car crazy, as in some other places, and they love them some racing. Uh, but it's just not always as pragmatic. And to be perfectly honest, that's one of the reasons why they have a much more better developed public transportation system. Uh, they tend to live in much smaller homes than we do in the West. Um, if you guys saw the Harry Potter movies, you know, like, compared to the Space Festival, uh, when you see the space for apartments, you'll see the big space. And honestly, one of the best ways to see this is look at uh, House Hunter International. It's, it's pretty crazy to see how small some of these places are and how much. Yes, ma'am. Well, didn't in England they used to do like bullet houses where like um, the like width of it would be like really short, but then like the length of it would be like super long? That could just be like the width of your house? Yeah, more or less. Um, again, it is. Um, but because of this, uh, this changes the mentality for how you spend your time with others. Uh, it becomes less um, practical to have a big gathering in your house because there's not enough space. So you use outdoor space or you go to public spaces. Um, coffee houses, internet cafes, um, journey beer gardens, things like that. And because of all these different things and because of a lot of other factors, the crime rate tends to be much lower in this region. Um, I forget, I, I read this not too terribly long ago, but their murder rate is like a tenth of what it is in the United States. It's, it's super duper low. Um, frankly, this, there's been a lot of studies in that. One of the major reasons has simply to do with um, the fact that they do have a well-trained police force, but also the fact that there's a lot of options out there in terms of what happens if you are in a very poor neighborhood, like free education all these different places, so that's not much of a real hindrance to being a well-paying job. You know, there, there's, there's opportunities out there. Um, and a general rule of thumb is if you look at something in Europe, it's going to be smaller than the equivalent thing in the United States. Case in point, I'll be back to this, so don't, don't worry, I'll come back. Uh, we talk about transportation. These are a pretty nice area, or nice option if you live in the Mediterranean, areas where it's not going to be that cold. Uh, you can ride these things around pretty much everywhere. They have fantastic gas mileage. Uh, do you guys know what a gas mileage is? Like this is? Um, a lot. <laughs> How much gas do you need to Around, yeah, how many miles a gallon? It's about 90 to 100 miles a gallon. For a family size car, a relatively small one, you're looking maybe 34, 35 miles a gallon. Uh, something like a Prius, you might get up to the 40s. Um, still not that great, comparatively. As opposed to something like this, the American equivalent, that's a Honda Gold thing. <laughs> Uh, now that being said, that being said, both of these have a very distinct different purpose. We absolutely have scooters, and they're very popular here in the United States. But that's only in certain areas, just like this is the other thing. This is a motorcycle that's meant for going across the entire continent. You wouldn't really need something quite like this 
in England, but they do exist. Um, this is kind of decidedly American because it's giant. Uh, for instance, the little scooter you saw has a 50 cubic centimeter engine. This has, I believe, a 1700 cubic centimeter engine. This thing uh, comes equipped with climate control for both the passenger and the driver. It has CB radio as well as satellite radio as well as uh, connection for Bluetooth for your telephone. It has a USB charger. It has speakers for the front and back so you can listen to music. Uh, it also has a number of other built-in features, such as speedometer, resting plates, and also luggage on the side bags in the back, and even little stash pockets next to the passenger seat as well. These things are made to go for a very, very long distance and be comfortable doing so. Gas mileage on one of these isn't as good as one of the scooters, but it isn't actually too shabby. It's about 55 to 60 miles an hour. Uh, so it's still pretty good considering the size. However, you don't see very many of these out on the streets. Do you guys know why? Expensive? Eh, they can be, that's for sure. It's our car if you right now. Well, it's not so much that either. It's, it has to do with distances. Let's have a look at instance for the distance and places between the United States and, and Europe. So if you're taking a trip from Louisville, Kentucky to California, right? You <laughs> measure that's 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 a long distance, right? I don't think you've ever made that trip. That's a long. Actually, my long friend did. Oh, is it? My friend did. It took them 48 hours. Yeah, okay. So let's say from Louisville to San Francisco. Okay. That's a long. About 11. Yeah. Okay. So if we're doing the same trip to Paris. Okay. Paris. Let's find it. Okay. Uh. Okay. Yeah, that's close. So the same distance from. Louisville to California would be a road trip from Paris to Syria. Oh, that's a good street. Yeah, in order to do that, you'd be going through one, two, maybe three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven countries. Why not mix it up at each one? Why not mix it up at each one? Indeed. Uh, the thing is, is, distance is something that a lot of folks don't quite realize when they come to the States. I had a friend who his family came from Japan to visit, and they were saying, like, you know, in one week, they wanted to visit California, Florida, oh. Washington, D.C., oh, yeah. and spend a few days in Kentucky. Oh, yeah, sure. He's like, that's not possible. How can I have this And they're like, why is it impossible? It's going to take us three days to drive just to one of those destinations. Oh! Mm -hmm. It's like, yes, it's that large. So, this is one of those things to consider. You know, as, as, as we look at these things. So, this has a purpose, but here's the thing is, not that many people in the States drive all over the country. It does happen, and there's certainly road trips, but th this type of thing is very specific to specific things. That's also why cars tend to be larger in the United States as well. Our distances are larger. It actually affects how people drive. For instance, if you look at cars that are manufactured in Europe, they're very interested in having comfortable and, and solid turning. Because if you think about it, a lot of these cities that are present in Europe are old medieval cities. Whenever they were planned, it wasn't set up in grids like our cities were. They were just kind of developed. So the roads are really tight and kind of constricted, and some places you can't even take cars because it's not wide enough. So there's a lot more twisting and turning that goes around a daily drive than with the you know in the United States. Because I can tell you right now, I take um, think about it, four turns to get to Fred's from my house. The rest is just straight, you know. If, if, if you want to make this car trip from here to there, in, in that part, you're basically going to be driving straight for days. You know? So it, it changes how we, we think about how we construct our vehicles. 
The other thing that's kind of interesting about European cities, though, is because they've been there for so long, whereas, like, we have, you know, graffiti, people, you know, artists, the spray paintings of it, they have a similar thing, but it's the works of, like, Renaissance masters, like Leonardo da Vinci and um, Raphael and all the other names are the world. Um, so it's, it's pretty easy to get lost just looking at stuff. Uh, Venice, in particular, is like one of the birthplaces of the Renaissance, and it's like you can't look at anything without like running into something that's amazing. That's one of the reasons why they don't let uh, cars in the heart of Venice. It's not because they can't; it's because it will destroy all of this. And as it is, Venice is being destroyed, it's sinking. So that's a problem if you live in Venice, as you can imagine. Anyways, uh, generally speaking. Culturally, the people of Europe are much more liberal, uh, just sort of like in Canada. Uh, although, again, there's got to be different mannerisms and customs from place to place. For instance, some places it's a lot more acceptable to be gregarious, and you know, talking to strangers and things. Like other places, they just kind of frown at you. Um, I also find that cities are cities are cities, regardless of where you are. So, for instance. Uh, one group of people might get a reputation for being rude. I find most often that's just because it's in the middle of a metro urban area where they're tired of tourists. Is the long and short of it. Um, there's there's a lot of stereotypes in, in, in that. In fact, I thought it was funny. I saw a picture today of a menu from a coffee shop in Paris, and basically, it's, if if you go and say one coffee, then they charge you like one pound or one euro thirty. If you go up and say, give me a coffee now, then it's one euro fifty. If you say, hey, how's it going? Can I have a coffee, please? It's just one euro. So it doesn't charge you more how rude you are. That's funny. It's kind of hilarious. Um, so. But that, it's going to, the mannerisms and customs will vary pretty dramatically depending on where you are, and not just in a country, but within the various places in the cities and things like that. Uh, in essence, it's like everywhere else. As far as leisure activity, because there is a high standard of living, they do have a lot of leisure time. In fact, they take more vacations. Do we have this discussion already? Yes. yes. Uh, so what do they do? Well, it depends again on where you are. Soccer, of course, would be well would be most uh, followed, most practiced, most beloved sport in Europe. But beyond that, there's all kinds of other activities. For the general rule, the, when you go to the north, there's uh, a love for going outside. Uh, you have some pretty beautiful areas in this area. For instance, there's a tradition in Germany where everyone in town just kind of goes outside and then hikes together. In fact, uh, if you think about the traditional dress of Germany, Lederhosen, right, it means literally leather pants. The reason for that, leather pants with big wool socks, is because when you're hiking, you have to go through brush and these thorny weeds and things like that. It protects your legs so you don't get scratched up. So that's why, to protect your clothing. Um, there's also skiing, of course. Um, and then beyond that, there's their scoring activities, music, I mean, for it's just the exact same type of thing we have in our society, just you know, maybe some subtle differences. Um, I am super jealous of Britain because that's where Cadbury is from, which we guys know Cadbury, Cadbury Cream Eggs. And uh, the Dairy Queens that they have in um, Britain have blizzards with Cadbury Cream Eggs. And that just makes me super jealous because I need that in my life and I can't have it. So, <laughs> sorry. That's okay, they're jealous of other people, so like we didn't trade that, you know, we started to change. That's a kicker. Um, so pretty outstanding. Um, but in any case, uh, socialized medicine, again, you guys know what this is. It's medicine, medicine, Medicare, uh, Medicare that's provided by the state as opposed to individuals. And there's a few other things that are provided as well. And again, that layer will depend in different areas. For instance, I forget which country it is. I think it's Switzerland, but I could be wrong. Uh, one of them, whenever you turn 18, they provide you a gun. And another one, you turn 21. And that's because to be a citizen of that nation, you are required to serve in the military. It's 
not like to get you work in the military. Now that being said, it's not always you know combat things like that. It's other stuff as well. But that means literally every single citizen in the country has a gun, and it's not abnormal to see someone on a bicycle with an assault rifle on their back. Um, that's because they're often going to shooting events, things like that. So they have lots of shooting sports. In fact, if you think about it, you guys know the biathlon in the Olympics? Yeah. It's a very weird combination sport. It is skiing and shooting. It was invented in this area. Because if you think about it, when you have lots of snow and you're in a military engagement, that's the easy way to move around to skiing and marksmanship combined together. Because the more your heart beats, the faster it goes, the harder it is to shoot the trails. So it's kind of an interesting sport that's involved in this area. Yes, we'll talk more about it later. That's it for today, brave souls.